The most common question I get asked after jailbreaking a console on this channel is, what's next? How about learning how to use an SD card and a memory card adapter, or even a micro SD card and a serial port adapter for compatible game cubes, for backing up your original disks or playing your pre-existing ISO files? I'm going to teach you how to use Swiss and CleanRip to back up and play your games your way. And be sure to stay to the end for an important bonus tip on which of these things you can expect to give you the best performance on your modded GameCube. CleanRip is an all-in-one solution that lets you make backup copies of your GameCube games onto SD Media directly on your GameCube. It's linked for you in the description below. On the GitHub page, scroll down to the Assets section. Then click on the latest version of CleanRip to download it to your computer. In your Downloads folder, you'll need to extract the downloaded zip file in order to access the GameCube-specific version of CleanRip. Once you have it extracted, delete the zip file out of your Downloads folder to eliminate clutter. With the zip file uncompressed, double click on the new folder that you just created. Insert a standard size SD card in FAT32 format into your computer. In this case, I've already used it in the GameCube, which is why it has a Swiss folder. But if you don't have this, don't worry, it will be created automatically for you. If you're only going to be using an SD card and not the SD to SP2 adapter with the micro SD, here's what I'd recommend. Create two folders on that SD card. Name the first one Apps, A-P-P-S. Then I recommend creating another folder right on the root of that same SD card. This time, rename the folder to Games. What we're doing is creating some organization so that when you start ripping your games to your SD card or dragging and dropping content over to it, you have some kind of method to the madness as to where it's all going to be. Now grab the file called cleanrip-gc.dol and copy it over into the apps folder on your SD card. Remove the SD card from your computer and insert it into a memory card to SD adapter for your GameCube. I have the one used in this video linked for you in the description. Power on your GameCube and launch Swiss using the exploit method of your choice. From the list of folders that you see on Swiss, use the D-pad to navigate down to apps and select it with the A button. You'll find the clean rip app located here. Highlight it with the D-pad and select it with the A button to launch it for the first time. You'll get a time delayed notice from the author. Read this notice and once you see the prompt, press the A button on your controller to continue. At the checksum calculations prompt, use the D-pad to scroll over to yes and select yes with the A button. You'll be prompted to select your SD gecko slot. What it's asking you for is, where do you want to dump this game to? In my existing setup, slot A has the save game exploit files to run Swiss, so I'm going to use slot B, which has the memory card to SD adapter. We'll take a look at SD to SB2 in just a moment. Once you've made your selection, press A to continue. You'll be prompted to insert an SD card formatted in FAT32 format. We've already done that, so press A to continue. You'll be prompted at this point to insert the GameCube game that you want to dump. In this case, I'm going to be using Star Wars Rogue Leader Rogue Squadron 2. Insert the game disc of your choice and close the lid on your GameCube. Then press A to continue. The system will take a moment to analyze your disc. You'll get a prompt asking if you've inserted an unlicensed disc. Not at all. This is my original copy of Star Wars Rogue Leader Rogue Squadron 2 USA variant. So in this instance, I'll simply select no with the A button to continue. This is going to begin the disc dumping process. As you can see here, this game takes about 28 minutes to dump from the disc to the SD card. And there's not one single chance we're watching that happen in real time. Once the dump process to the SD card is complete, you'll see a confirmation message. Press the A button to continue. Clean Rip will ask if you want to dump another disc. If you do, press the A button and repeat the process. If you don't, press the B button. Just be aware that your system will reset at this point. Once you've finished dumping discs, here's what I recommend that you do next. The clean rip process creates a text file with some basic information about the game that you just dumped. You can either keep this file, or in this case I'm just going to delete it off the SD card as we're not going to need it in this process moving forward. Here's the game backup file itself. It's in .iso format. I would recommend that you rename this file to something that you recognize, as the file name that's created typically isn't something that you'd recognize right off the bat. Since we backed up Star Wars Rogue Leader, that's what I'm going to name the file. Once you have the file renamed, grab that file and drag and drop it in the games folder. This is going to keep your content well organized on your SD card. But what about if you already have games backed up in ISO format? Here's what you do. 
For this example, I've moved the open SD card to the left side of the screen, and in the downloads folder, I've pre-staged Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube in ISO format. If your ISOs are already pre-baked and ready to go, all you've got to do is drag and drop them onto your SD card. In this case, I'm just going to drop it right into the games folder for sanity's sake. I have this very fast SD card link for you in the description. And while it won't add speed to your GameCube, it makes transferring games on your PC a snap. Put the SD card back in the memory card to SD adapter and relaunch Swiss on your GameCube. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the games folder. Then select it with the A button. The games you've placed on the SD card, either by clean rip or by transferring them over from your computer, are right here. Use the D-pad to highlight the game that you want, then select it with the A button. You'll see several choices for things you can do with the game, including options and cheats. Once you've set up the game the way you want it, boot it with the A button. The first time you launch the game, you'll see several messages about patching files. Once this process is complete, the game will start. Remember how I mentioned something about SD to SP2 and micro SD cards earlier in the video? Check this out. If you happen to own the original generation of GameCube, the one that has the DOL001 model number, you have an extra storage option open to you. Look on the bottom of your GameCube and you'll find this door. There's a serial port located underneath it. You can use this special adapter that converts micro SD cards for use in serial port 2 on the GameCube. I have it linked for you in the description. It tells you right on the adapter which way to insert it into the serial port. To get started, insert a FAT32 formatted micro SD card into your computer. You can configure files and folders any way you like on your micro SD card. Here's what I'd recommend. If you have the memory card to SD adapter, I'd set up just the apps folder and applications there. Then I'd set up a games folder for your GameCube content on the micro SD card, since it tends to be longer term storage. Just like before with the SD card, to copy your content, just go into the folder you've created and drag and drop it there. Remove the micro SD card from your computer and insert it face forward into the SD to SP2 adapter. Then insert the adapter into serial port 2 on the bottom of the GameCube. Facing inside on the adapter means facing toward the center optical drive area. Then replace the cover plate. Power on your GameCube, and when you load Swiss, you'll find that it is likely defaulted to the SD to SP2 adapter. This is great, but if you want to change it, press the B button. This will shift the highlight from the Files and Folders area down to the bottom navigation section. Use the D-pad to highlight the Eject button and press the A button. This opens up the Device Selection screen. From here, you can use the D-pad to scroll right and left through the list of choices to select the device that you want. In this case, I'm just going to cycle through the choices and go back to the SD to SP2 adapter. Just select your choice with the A button. Just like before, use the D-pad to highlight the folder of your choice and select it with the A button. And here are all of the games that we just copied over to the micro SD card. Oh yeah, and about that performance data. The Wikipedia shows the average speed of the DVD drive to be about 2 to 3 megabytes per second. Reddit users have reported the average memory card transfer speed to be about 1.6 megabytes per second. And those same Reddit users report that the serial port 2 speeds tend to be around 3.2 megabytes per second. So if you want to get the maximum performance out of your SD storage media, use the SD to SP2 port if you have it. If you don't, don't sweat it. Use the memory card to SD adapter and you'll still have a great time. You can put a lot more than just GameCube games on your SD card and play them on your modded GameCube. If you ignore this, you're missing out on thousands of games you could be playing right now. Learn how to set up RetroArch on your GameCube in the video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description. And if you don't see it yet, well, this video is good too.